Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another great Wealthy Winning Wednesday. You can see we have a little background change today. We have actually the beach in the background, although it's a little hard to see from our picture perfect window. Good morning, everybody. Please let us know if you can hear me and where you're from. So please let me know if you hear audio. Welcome, everybody. All right, we're going to get this slide presentation started. All right, where is everybody from? All right, Lori, thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk about you, but don't worry, it's all good. Ingrid Chavez says yes. Alvina, I hear you. Yay, everybody. This is a little change from what we had planned. I was actually going to be out on the uh, balcony overlooking the ocean, but unfortunately, little weather came in. It looks like it may be a, a little storm coming in, and all of a sudden, it got real windy. So we had to relocate inside, but we still have that nice view. I don't know if you can see that view of the ocean back there. So if not, no worries. We're going to have a great webinar. Okay, Shukita says, I can't hear you. Okay. Um, okay, maybe turn on your microphone because it looks like others can. And let us know where you're from. Where are you from? Oh, you can't see me. Okay. Ah, okay. Not sure why that's happening. My webcam's on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and load the slide presentation. So let me know if you can see the slide presentation. It says start your own brokerage. Start. Oh, okay, Shukita logged out, logged back in. You can hear now. Awesome. Oh, Alvina joining us from Modesto, California. Wonderful. And you see the slide. Okay, great. Awesome. Today is our eighth in our series of start your own brokerage blueprints to build your empire profitably. And as we know, our sessions are not just for newbie brokers, but also existing brokerage owners and managers who want to scale their business, build something big, or just do things a little better and drive profitability a little higher. So that's what our goal is today. I hope everybody uh, is ready to learn because we've got a lot planned for you with Step eight, risk management. That's something that's important to every brokerage owner and manager. And uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you. Looks like we have more people joining us. So go ahead and let us know in the chat where you're joining us from so we can say hello. As you know, our sessions are five, Fortune 500 Concepts without that MBA price tag. So everything I learned in business school, I'm going to deliver here for you with uh, some great tips of my own and also with the AASBC tips, which we'll be talking about more as we get there. All right. We're Freesboro, Tennessee. Hey, welcome, Shukita. Eric Nordam from Amsterdam. Nordam, I hope I said your name right, from Amsterdam. Hey, Eric, thank you for joining us all the way from Amsterdam. Okay, everybody, great. MBA Broker Consultants is a company that helps you not just play the game, but change the game of real estate brokerages. Okay. And today's mastermind, as we said, is the eighth of 12 steps. We also have an activity workbook, a bonus download, and some great resources here at the end for you. A little bit about me. As you know, I earned my MBA degree last year. 
And prior to that, a BA degree in real estate, I've had my license for 30 years and broker owner of a small boutique brokerage. And my goal today is to elevate the standards of professionalism in our real estate industry. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Risk management is all about lowering liability, reducing exposure and minimizing risk. Wouldn't you agree? And that's why you're here today. So on our agenda, the topics we're going to touch on include risk management assessment, legal compliance, supervision of agents, internal controls, audits, fraud and ID theft, insurance coverage, and lastly, we're going to talk about prevention as well. Don't gamble with your brokerage. That's the most important thing, right? is you spend a lot of time and energy and and capital to get your brokerage set up and you don't want to jeopardize your license you don't want to have a commission ectomy as we call it where you have to go to court or get a fine and lose everything that you've built and worked so hard for so today we're going to talk about building the foundation and ensuring that your company is not at risk or at least minimizing those risks, I, I guess I should say, because there's risk inherent in everything. We're gonna start with the risk assessment scoreboard. And right now I'm gonna go ahead and share with you. I'm gonna share the, today's activity workbook. So, all right, you should see it over there in your chat bar. It's session eight activities. You can go ahead and download that. And it's just a two page worksheet that allows you to take notes for today's um, session. And let's keep going. So the first thing that we'd like to talk about is a risk assessment scoreboard or risk assessment checklist, right? And that will tell you how well you do in each area. Do you have a lot of risk in this area? Is it, rated one almost non-existent is it rated two reasonably possible or three very likely and those very likely areas are areas that we need to think about um, catching up with right or um, maybe looking at those a little closer to see how we can reduce our risk or, or minimize our risk or or transfer the risk we're going to talk about that today too so this is an example that you see of a scoreboard it's not necessarily geared towards real estate agents, but we will have one for you in a few minutes. That's specifically for real estate brokerages and agents. Now, wouldn't you agree the problem areas that are most critical to brokerages are advertising because that's where agents can put anything out there and then your brokerage can get called on the carpet, even if you didn't know about the ad, right? Because we're supposed to be supervising the agents. Independent contractor versus employee. That could be a huge trouble area. We're going to talk about that today too. What about the code of ethics with the realtor association? What about trust accounts? That's probably one of the biggest areas that real estate brokerages, um, you know, get fined by their state licensing agency or get shut down is for trust account violations. What about RESPA violations? Fair housing laws. And last but not least are those unhappy clients. Womp womp. Those are the ones that usually start the ball rolling down the hill in a bad direction because they're unhappy and they will go to any lengths to get back at you or to feel vindicated with some service that they're unhappy about. So that's one of the a critical problem area to be aware of. Now, what are some of the, you know, we'll call it bad things that could happen. And what are some of the agencies and organizations that we need to be compliant with to ensure that our brokerage stays ahead of the risk management game? So first of all, we have our local realtor association. We have a code of ethics, as you know, that 
their code of ethics, a, a complaint can be brought against one of your agents. And of course, when it's brought against your agents, the brokerage is going to be named as well because it's your job to supervise them, even if you didn't know about it. The MLS is another area. Uh, state licensing agency for whatever state you're in. Small claims court, which is a civil suit that could be brought. That's a judicial matter. What about taking it a step farther and even worse is a criminal suit. That could be a DA's office at your city, county or state or federal, such as FBI. Or what about those HUD laws that we have to comply with fair housing, RESPA, those types of things. So you can see running a brokerage is not just as simple as passing the test and, and hanging your shingle. There are a lot of things that we need to ensure we have in place before we start operating the business or that we have to continually monitor and make sure that we have in place as we conduct our business. So there are four basic ways to um, I won't say get rid of risk, but to sort of avoid the effects of risk. And one is just to reduce the risk altogether. And that could be through having good procedures in place, having good systems in place, and making sure you have those checks and balances and hiring the right people, right? So that reduces your risk. Another way to um, deal with risk is to transfer it. And that is generally through insurance, which we'll talk about today as well, where you're taking the risk from yourself, you're transferring it to another entity. Another is to mitigate risk. So that might be through um, having a great attorney, having a risk management person on your side that helps you proactively deal with situations. And another might be just avoiding risk altogether, right? And avoiding risk altogether could be um, such as not uh, practicing real estate in areas that you know are risky. Um, property management, as we know, is litigious. I like property management. There's a lot of good things about it. But again, it does bring a level of possible lawsuit into your introduced into your corporation. That's why I always avoid separating your property management from your real estate business, have separate entities for each. Um, also dealing with risky clients can be avoided. Risky clients, maybe you have investors that you deal with um, who are clients of yours and maybe they're doing things that you're not comfortable with. Um, we won't go into details, but, um, we've seen some of those, or maybe you have agents that are, you know, you've received complaints from other co-op agents about those agents in the past. And maybe it's time to decide that you don't want to carry that risk and just avoid that risk by not hiring those types of agents or maybe letting them go if um, they're jeopardizing your company. Well, where do we start with all this risk management? The most important place to start is with your company and your company's culture. The culture must be a place where dishonesty is never overlooked, unethical behavior is never tolerated, no matter how it's significant. And it starts with you and I as the brokerage owners and managers and how we set the standard for what we expect in our company. And we do that starting with us as an example, right? And how we deal with things and people are watching us. Our agents are going to understand our culture by looking at us and seeing what we're doing and we set the tone. So that's the most important thing. That's the first starting block right there. We set our goal for risk management. Our objectives are to lower the liability reduce the risk and minimize exposure. So there's a five step process and it starts with identifying what those risks are. And you saw that just a minute ago with a risk assessment, right? So you identify the risk, you assess them, determine which ones are need to be neutralized and which ones can be controlled. 
And then periodically, you're going to review those controls to make sure that you're staying in the clear, right? All right, let's talk about compliance for brokers. Now, we know there are some problem areas. We call this herding cats, right? <laughs> um, dealing with real estate agents because, you know, they're independent contractors. They do their own thing as they should. And they enjoy that freedom and that flexibility. But on the flip side, we as brokers were completely 100% liable, responsible to supervise them and manage them. And which is difficult to do because, you know, they're not employees. You can't mandate that they attend meetings. You can't mandate that they, you know, come into the office during certain hours and things like that. So your controls are limited. So some of the areas that we see are agents who are not in compliance with files, with their documents or disclosures. Here's another risky area. Agents who are doing property management on their own and getting paid for it outside of the brokerage. As we know, in most states, the funds must funnel through the brokerage, not through the agent, and the broker does need to supervise, and the broker needs to have the trust account for property management. So that could be a problem area. Another one is agents who hire assistants as independent contractors, and the state department could come down on you for um, saying that they should be employees. And then uh, who gets in trouble but the brokerage? Um, also, if they are, if you do have agents hiring assistants, should they be, be correctly being paid through the brokerage instead of through the agent if they're licensed? So that's something you're going to need to look at as well. Agents, many of them get paid directly for BPOs, broker price opinions. Is that acceptable in your state or should those funds be channeled through your brokerage? Agents not attending training and keeping abreast of laws. <laughs> That's a tough area, right? It's impossible to get agent to mandate training for a lot of the agents. And the ones who don't come to the training are the ones that we need them to come to training. What about agents who are out there doing their own thing? with promotions and ads and sending mailers out. And guess how you as a brokerage hear about it? Somebody complains and they send you a notice or, you know, you get a, an angry consumer calling you. So that's how you get notice about it because they don't get their ads approved in advance. And last but not least, social media postings. We call that the wild, wild west, right? So let me know in the chat if you have seen any of these problem areas in your brokerage, or if you perhaps have others that you've seen that we didn't list here. So with agent compliance, the important thing is to insulate your company with an agent compliance and supervision system. Where do you start? Well, you start with those critical problem areas we just mentioned. Make a list of how you can make sure that you as the brokerage have some type of system that requests your agents to be compliant. Even if they don't do their part, you have to show good faith that you have done your due diligence as a broker and you have requested that, right? Maybe they didn't come to the training, but at least you held the training, you made it available. Okay, Linda says, yes, you have seen some of those, but not lately. All right, that's good to know. So the best response is an affirmative defense. That means you've been proactive, you have a plan in place, and that gives you a complete wall of security against risk management. Now, one of the things that we don't talk about often in real estate, but since I'm trained as an identity theft specialist, I'm aware of laws with FACTA, HIPAA, and GLB which require, which is the Graham-Leach-Bliley Act, which require confidentiality of data. So your agents are out there talking to buyers, collecting pay stubs, bank statements, you know, an earnest money deposit check, um, tax returns, 
and they keep all this information on their phone, on their computer, on their email. And what if that information is compromised? And so the most important thing is start with a preventive measure and employee confidentiality disclosure is a great place to start to comply with those. What about agent supervision? It's legally required. Yes, they're independent contractors and they are difficult to supervise sometimes because they're each doing their own thing. But remember, when the agent gets called on the carpet, the brokerage license comes into question. And if the agent goes down, most likely the brokerage will go down in flames with the agent or at least that broker's license, right? So that's one reason I do not like absentee brokerage licenses. For example, we've heard of the rent a broker where you can ask a broker to just come in and absorb the liability and be the broker of record, but they really have no supervision. They don't know what's going on at the company. Not a good idea, right? Not a good idea. So we have our first poll here. So let's talk about educating agents. How often do you hold your office meetings? All right, go ahead and take a look at that. How often do you hold office meetings? A, do you hold office meetings weekly because you want to stay closely connected with your agents? B, do you hold office meetings monthly to educate, keep abreast of the laws, boost your team's spirit? Or C, do you not hold office meetings? You don't bother because agents don't attend anyway, so why should you hold an office meeting? All right, we're waiting to see feedback on the poll. It looks like so far, B, monthly, is winning to educate and boost our team spirit. Okay, I think a couple sessions ago, we gave you some ideas for office meetings. Definitely, you want to have something that talks about uh, legal updates and give some education and training on that. Um, that's probably not the agent's favorite topic for them to come to an office meeting for. So make sure they're fun, energetic, enthusiastic. Make sure that the meetings are also giving them some sales skills, helping them keep profit in the forefront, working on their volume and their production as well. And uh, also just cultivating that team spirit. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll because I think everybody has commented and we have a hundred percent response was B monthly team meetings. So awesome. Great job, everybody holding your meetings. Okay. Alvina says you hold meetings every two months as well as individually every two weeks. All right. That's great. Very proactive on your part. We talked about systems a lot, especially in, let the last session was all about operations management, foolproof systems, having a system for agent onboarding, agent training and legal updates, meetings, communication, documentation, especially when it comes to transactions and compliance. So what systems do you have in place? Now, it would be easy to sit back and say, my agents don't, follow my system. So why bother putting them out there? The reason is because it lowers liability and risk for you as a brokerage owner or manager. If you have a system in place, even if they're not following the system, at least you can show that you were proactive in having a meeting, talking about these legal issues that the new laws that passed and educating your agents. And if you don't have a meeting in house, maybe you take all of your agents, you invite them to come see at your local realtor association or real estate event, the latest laws update every year, right? So some type of uh, system that shows that you as a brokerage reach out on a regular basis and you make these available for agents and you do your part because if you're audited, that will show in your favor that you at least, did your part of reaching out to the agent and 
and asking them to take part of the training. Now here we see some people that are not very happy. We call this a commission ectomy. <laughs> and that's when all those cha-ching dollars roll backwards and, and all of a sudden that big paycheck that you thought you were gonna get now becomes a liability and a hazard, right? Anybody ever had that happen before? I hope not, and that's what we're trying to prevent today. The commission ectomy. <laughs> Speaking of agent onboarding, we do have our next week's live webinar. It's going to be something a little different. That's going to be a collaborative webinar with BrokerMint. And we're going to talk about agent onboarding and setting up a system to make sure that agents are, um, all of their documents are in at the beginning, that they're set up correctly, trained correctly. You get them in the system and get them producing. So that's going to be next Wednesday. Be sure to tune in for that. Linda says, yippee. <laughs> internal controls. This is a, what we borrowed from a Fortune 500 concept, but internal controls are the best way to minimize your risk internally by doing things that you can to prevent situations from happening. For example, client trust accounts regulatory compliance, internal audits, policies and procedures, financial controls, inventory controls. And having those all important checks and balances, especially when it comes to things like, <clears throat> excuse me, transactions and money, right? Make sure that there's at least two people checking and balancing each other and make sure that there's not just one person responsible for everything or just the agent responsible for everything themselves. So again, internal controls is also an area with the Association of Accredited Small Business Consultants. It's one of the areas that I trained in. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and give you another file. Um, this was our freebie file for the end of today, but I'm going to give it to you right now. I'm going to share this with you. It's called the Risk Assessment Checklist. Okay, so please let me know if you're able to download this. It's a Risk Assessment Checklist, and it's, com it's a combination of AASBC, which is a small business consulting um, standard, and also I added in there things specific for real estate brokerages. So please let me know if you can um, download that. Oh, Linda says, thanks a bunch. Yay, you're welcome, Linda. Awesome. So glad you received it. It's three pages. It's very thorough. It helps you go through and decide what things you need to focus on. You could actually turn it into a rating system like we saw at the beginning of the webinar today. The rating system where you say, these are the critical areas that we really need to focus on um, in our brokerage. Okay, Shukita says yes. Wonderful. All right, we're going to keep going here. And audits. Ooh, that dreaded word that we all hate to think about. So in, so audits. Oh, Michaela says, I got it. Thank you so much for all your help and all you're doing. Yay, thank you, Michaela. Awesome. I don't know if you guys can see me now. I'm sort of my, my screen is black. Oh, there it came back on. But when I'm blacked out, you get the nice ocean view behind me, which is great. So there are three types of audits. The first is an internal self audit. And those are the best type. If you're a volunteer with a nonprofit organization, you're probably doing internal audits every year at the end of the year, especially if you have a changeover in leadership. And a self audit is a great way for you as a brokerage to identify your areas of risk and areas that need improvement. Then we have a tax audit, which could be by the IRS or your state tax department. And then we have a real estate audit, which would be from the State Department of Real Estate Licensing. So those are three different types of audits. And of course, you don't want to go it alone. You want to call for help. Who are you going to call? So here are some important people that you need on your side. You need an attorney on your side. 
definitely either on uh, retainer or if you have legal shield have an attorney on call um, even your state realtor hotline may have a brokerage option where you can call in and get your questions answered so i mean that's you know they can't do everything they can't review documents and things like that for you but they can answer questions and that's a big help also your accountant your cpa your tax prep person these are all people that you need to have on speed dial in case you have a question or in case of an audit. Also, what about having a risk management specialist? We happen to have on our call with us today, Lori Namazi. And I hope I said your name correctly, Lori. I'm going to put it here. Yeah. Okay. I just put it right there in the chat. And she is a real estate brokerage consultant that helps brokerages with risk management. Will help you put a plan together or um, deal with things either proactively or after the fact if you get audited. So it's really important to have a professional on your side. Now let's talk about fraud and ID theft. Okay, so fraud and ID theft is a huge area of problem for real estate brokerages. So we have a little poll for you now. So in our poll, our question is, do you worry about fraud disrupting your business? And so the answers are A, yes, fraud is at the top of my mind and we're always prepared. Or is your answer B, Sometimes it is a worry. I'm wondering how I can prevent it. Or is it C? No, I'm not worried about fraud because it's never happened at our company, which I would call faulty thinking because just because it's never happened doesn't mean it couldn't. As a matter of fact, each one of us, when we put on our brokerage hat and we uh, open our doors for business, we are in a fraud management company right fraud management business every business ha carries some risk and liability with it okay we're waiting for a couple more poll responses a yes it's at the top of my mind and we're prepared b sometimes i'm worried about it i i want to be able to prevent it or c no it's never happened at our company and i'm not worried at all so we have, it looks like 100% of responses say sometimes, and I want to prevent it, so that's great. Good job, everybody. We're going to go ahead and end the poll. Oh, Lori said, perfect pronunciation. Thanks for the shout-out. Yay, you're welcome, Lori. Linda says, I think about fraud, but I don't feel fully prepared to prevent it. Well, we can't always prevent it. And that's the problem is that fraud can happen to any business, regardless of how careful we are. So we need to have a good system, not just, you know, preventing it, but also dealing with it after it happens. So um, one of the problem areas that we all know now is wire fraud. Wire fraud is on the rise. It's a huge problem area for real estate agents. Our clients are very vulnerable. And so you don't know what they're doing. Concealment of material facts, bribery, extortion, conflict of interest. That's a huge area for real estate agents, isn't it? Conflict of interest. Forgery, theft of trade secrets, breach of fiduciary duty. So huge areas of liability. I guess the first question would be, why do people commit fraud in the first place? And the AASBC calls this the fraud triangle. So people commit fraud because first of all, they have a motive. Usually they want money or they want something that comes with money, such as property or material goods. They have a motive. Right. So they're and they're driven by, let's just be honest, greed. OK, so their motive is greed and they probably don't have 
the morals or the ethical morals that you and I have. Or the other thing is they rationalize it. So we see rationalization is there. So even good people can sometimes get caught up in fraud by rationalizing it and saying, oh, well, you know, so-and-so did this and they got away with it, so it must be okay. Or to say, oh, well, I really need it and they should have given it to me, but because they didn't, I'm going to go ahead and take it, whatever their rationalization is. And those are areas that we as brokerage owners can't really prevent or change people's motive or their rationalization. But the one thing we can change is the third thing, their opportunity. We can give them fewer opportunities and narrow that window of opportunities so it's virtually impossible or for them to commit fraud. They have to go through a lot and we're not an easy target. Wire fraud, we just talked about that a minute ago. So here are some ways to prevent wire fraud. <clears throat> Excuse me, warn your buyers and sellers in advance. I think we're all doing this now because we're all so aware of it, right? Has anybody had a, a client that was a victim of wire fraud in a transaction? If you have, go ahead and type it into the chat. Hopefully not, but we have heard horror stories about it happening to brokerages and you know not only does wire fraud hurt your buyers and your sellers you know the whole transaction may be canceled um, they're gonna lose their money probably never get it back if the transaction is canceled your your brokerage isn't gonna get paid because there's no transaction closing also uh, you could be sued right so that's why it's important to Make sure that you're working with a reputable escrow or closing company and make sure their email messages are secured, they're encrypted, they have SSL, which is a socket layer protection. I know the escrow companies that I work with um, here in California, they're very on the ball and they've been able to prevent a lot of um, potential fraud, wire fraud situations because they're really on the ball with their procedures. Another thing I like to do, and um, oh, D. Johnson, no, I don't know anybody who has had wire fraud, good. Another thing I like to do is, you know, in the beginning of a transaction, I like to meet the buyers at the escrow office or for you folks not in California, that would be the closing attorney's office. And what I like to do is, introduce them personally to the closing rep in person, okay? So make sure that they know who they're dealing with and that they have a good working relationship with that person. Now, besides that, there's another reason, which is that um, the, um, I've got a little background noise here. Uh, but another reason is if you're a brokerage that you don't want to take checks from a buyer, you don't want to take the earnest money deposit, by meeting the buyer at escrow, they can give the money to the escrow officer right then and there, or they can do the wire form with the escrow officer there in person. So it sets up that good communication that will help prevent any wire fraud in the future of, you know, when they get that weird email out of the blue, they'll say, hey, I'm going to call my escrow rep or my closing rep and, and see if they really sent this to me because um, this looks weird or I don't remember them telling me they were going to send this to me. Another thing is when you get that weird email, you know, tell them you don't call the number in the email. You have that rep's business card. You met that rep in person. You call them directly and ask them, did you send me this email? Right. And also some banks before they do wire transfers, they may offer two-step verification, which is really great. Um, so everybody has to work together and do our part to deter fraud. So make sure you have a fraud deterrence plan with ongoing identification of potential areas of fraud. Make sure your policies do not tolerate illegal or unethical behavior. If you have agents who are, you know, you don't feel comfortable with some of their borderline activities, maybe it's good to just, you know, Cut that, 
cut them loose and uh, lower your liability. Again, continuous employee and agent training is critical and reinforcing our procedures and what type of conduct we expect is really important as well. We said that in the beginning, be a good role model of the you know, actions that you expect. So identity theft, it could happen to anyone. And if it does, it may destroy your company. That's a huge area of concern for us as real estate um, brokers, because remember our agents could be collecting all this confidential information. And with the way people are doing business now, you know, maybe their client, you know, the buyers are sending your agents a copy of their bank statement. They snap a picture of it, send it on their phone. Now it's on your agent's phone and now they lose their phone or somebody hacks into their email because they're using an unsecured email and all of a sudden, you know, somebody has access to this client's bank account. So identity theft is really scary. We think of identity theft as just one thing, but there's actually five common types of identity theft, driver's license, social security, medical, character or criminal, and financial identity theft. It's not just about credit cards. Um, one of the obstacles to us as brokerage owners dealing with identity theft is our mindset because we're honest people. We work hard. We don't spend our day thinking about how to rob other people. So we're not always aware or alert that there are people out there who have no goal in life, but to rob other people. And they spend all day thinking about that. And we have to be vigilant and we have to be very aware and alert of, about that at all times. One of the, the, um, things we talked about earlier is the Graham Leach Bliley safeguard rule. And what that requires is for businesses to appoint an ISO. That's an information security officer. It doesn't mean you have to go out and hire a new person, but maybe you already have a compliance officer. Maybe it's a manager, maybe it's a transaction coordinator, maybe it's you. And so that person can also be your information security officer who ensures that you have a policy like we showed you earlier, confidentiality statement to protect non-public information and make sure that you have mandatory training for agents and employees who have access to that. Now, if one of your clients, a buyer or a seller is a victim of identity theft, or if your records are compromised, like somebody comes in and, you know, stills your laptop and you have no idea where it's at or what they're doing with all that data on there, then there are certain procedures that you need to follow. You need to notify each of your clients within a certain amount of time that they, their information may have been compromised and um, you have to provide them with some resources. So it's, you know, quite, quite lengthy if that happens and, you know, we'll just be very safe and, Hope for the best, right? Insurance. What is the benefit of insurance? Insurance is a transfer of risk from your brokerage firm to the insurance company. Now there are various different types of insurance. The one we commonly think about for typical real estate brokerage is e and insurance for errors and omissions. Now I'm going to tell you, I have heard this said before by a brokerage, um, leadership that don't worry if we're making any mistakes at our company because we have ENO insurance, they'll protect us. What's wrong with that statement, right? That's a huge myth because first of all, insurance is not an excuse to do, uh, to have bi bad business practices. Secondly, ENO insurance, is not designed to protect you as a business owner. E&O insurance is designed to protect the public, your clients or consumers. It's not designed to protect you. In addition, once you have an E&O insurance claim, you're, you're going to have a huge deductible to pay. 
you still might have to go to court. You still might be reprimanded by your state or HUD or your Department of Licensing. And e and insurance doesn't cover fraud. So if you have agents out there committing fraud, e and insurance is basically, you know, worthless to pay for it thinking it's going to help you in that case because it's not. Not to say e and insurance isn't worthless because it's very valuable, but it, it's not designed to cover people who are out there committing crimes in your brokerage's name. So now we have a little poll for you. And our poll is, do you carry e insurance? And we have three answers for you that you can select from. So e insurance, yes, I carry it because it's required by my state law. Or B, yes, I carry it because it's a good business practice. It's not required by my state law, but I decide I want to have it anyway. And C is... Not yet, but I'd like to find a good policy. Okay, great. We're having a lot of responses on A and B. Um, I'm surprised e and insurance and bonding is not required for all brokerages in all states. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm not sure um, why not, but it's not required in California. And we're getting some great responses here. 71% said, yes, it's required by my state. And 29 says, yes, I have it because it's a good business practice. So good for you. Good for you that have it, whether it's required or not, for just having it. We're going to end the poll here and keep going. So again, insurance is important because it transfers risk from your brokerage to the insurance company. Now the types of insurance that you could have are E&O, which is errors and omissions, workers comp, liability or umbrella insurance, and that would be with a, you know, like a regular insurance company that covers businesses. Not every insurance company covers businesses, so we'll talk about that at the end with the resources. Automobiles. If you have vehicles owned or leased by your corporation and do you have, uh, are you named as an additional coverage for your agents who are putting buyers in the car and driving around with clients in their car? And last but not least, a new type of insurance called cybersecurity that will help you deal with wire fraud or at least feel a little bit uh, more secure and dealing with wire fraud um, threat that we know is out there today. But regardless of insurance, regardless of what measures you take, prevention is always the best medicine, wouldn't you agree? Our goal is to be proactive, plan for those what if scenarios, and remember Murphy's Law, which is when you least likely plan for it, it'll happen. So that's why I'm vigilant in planning because if you plan and put everything in place, it usually never happens. But um, if you don't plan, that's when it happens, right? So we want to be proactive. Okay, Michaela says, can we get some E&O insurance names to get better coverage than we might have now? Absolutely. Um, I will give you one at the end, Hiscox Insurance, and I'll give you a link to that at the end. And I have done a little research a little legwork, and I think they have some of the best rates. So, uh, yay, great question. Thanks for asking. So your goal is to do what? To take action today, complete a risk assessment, follow best business practices, comply with all state laws, keep good records in writing, which can be very challenging since we do so much on our phones nowadays, right, especially with the text messages. And remember, if you get that, audit, be sure to call and get some reinforcements. Get your attorney, your CPA, a risk management specialist, get somebody to help you. Don't go it alone. Get a great team on your side. All right, now we have the resources for you. Oh, Jana says Pearl Insurance. Okay, cool. We have some resources for you. We have Lori Namazi. She's a CEO and brokerage operations consultant of Namazi Real Estate Resources. 
And you can see her website on here is namaziresources.com. I'm going to go ahead and type that in to the chat here. namaziresources.com. All right, so go ahead and uh, click on that, take a look at her site. She's awesome. She's also a Woman Up uh, member and Women's Council Realtors member, so somebody that I recommend. We also have Hiscock Insurance, which carries is E&O and business liability. And I do have a link for you. I'm going to go ahead and um, let me put the link in here for you, okay, um, Janice and others. Link, link, link. Okay, there we go. Because I have a link that will give you a discount. So that's my special link. I'll go ahead and put that in for you. All right, so we went ahead and put that in. Let me know if you're getting all these links we're putting in. The last one is the FTC, Federal Trade Commission. They have a wonderful report called Take Charge, Fighting Back Against Identity Theft. That gives you a lot of great information, good ideas, and some proactive strategies to get started. So, and let me go ahead and put their link in as well. And don't worry, I'll send you all this in a follow-up email. So FTC. FTC. All right, so there we go. The FTC. So let me know if you're getting those links. I put all three of those links in the chat bar for you. Our free gift to you today, which you already received, was the risk assessment checklist. And I'm going to, uh, oh, we're still sharing the file. So awesome, that's great. So if you didn't download it, be sure to take a look at it now. The most important thing is to be vigilant don't get complacent and think it'll never happen here because things happen when you least likely expect it, right? And we are responsible for our whole empire that we're creating. We're building it on a solid foundation. So today was the eighth of the 12 steps to build your brokerage empire with our activity workbook, our bonus download, and our great resources. We're learning about Fortune 500 concepts without the MBA degree. If you have any questions, be sure to go ahead and put them in the chat. And if you have just a minute, stay tuned. We have some great things coming up that we'd like to talk about. Okay. Everybody doing good so far? So first of all, next week we mentioned we have a live webinar, and our topic is agent onboarding. We're going to show how to set up your procedures so it runs on autopilot. Now, a couple weeks ago, um, I believe it was session five, I was talking about agent onboarding. Thank you, Lori. She said, great content. Michaela said, thank you so much. You're amazing. Yay. Woohoo. You guys too. So we talked about agent onboarding and really um, what we need to do for agent onboarding. And so we're going to show you a live demo of that in action of how you could work that at your company. Next is crush the calendar. So that'll be coming up on December 5th and 12th. And we're going to have a great handout on crush the calendar showing um, a list of things that you need to put on your calendar that are must have make or break dates for next year and how you can accomplish all of your goals, run your brokerage and expand, scale your company and continue on your upward path of profitability. So that's going to be really awesome. But here's the best thing I want you to put on your calendar. This is going to be December 19th. December 19th is our Max Money Marathon. Woohoo! Who's ready for that? I have a great offer here I'm going to go ahead and share because some of you might not be able to join us for the entire Max Money Marathon. What is it? It is all day replays. I know, I know, I know you've been asking for all these replays. They expire after a week. We didn't all get a chance to watch them. 
So we're going to start at 7 a.m. Pacific time and go all the way to 7 p.m. Pacific time, which is going to be Eastern time, 10 to 10 on Wednesday, December 19th. You need a special link to register for it, which I'll go ahead and put in the chat because it is not our standard um, event that we normally have. So it's, you're going to need a different registration code. Again, it is free, but you can see we have back to back to back to back sessions all day long. And then you can also see I have put a little offer out there for you. If you don't want to wait till December 19th, if you want access to every single replay, all the way up to session eight, plus crush your calendar, plus we will be including sessions 10, 11, and 9, 10, 11, 12, once we get those recorded in January. So that'll be all part of the same package. And today we have 50% off using our coupon code MBA195. So the price today is $195 which is half price of the $390 investment, which is still a bargain. If you are military, if you're active duty military, please message me, contact me, reach out to me because we have a different price for you. It's actually 75% off and I, I will give you the coupon code for that as well. So anyway, questions, comments, please let me know. Okay. Janice says, thanks, Virginia, great information. When is the Brokerman Agent Onboarding Webinar? That is next Wednesday. Same time, same place. So it's going to be instead of today was session eight, instead of going into session nine next week, we're going to go right into the Brokerman. So this replay will only be available for a few days, not for a whole week. Oh, you said you're not going to make it because of your daughter's birthday. You're happy to purchase the packet. Woohoo! All right. Thanks, Michaela. You can go ahead and um, do that. And so excited for your daughter's birthday. That'll be a great mother daughter time to spend with her. And Janice said, thanks so much. You're welcome. Okay. Awesome. Great. We do have custom business plans available. A few of you have been able to take advantage of these, which is a great way to start off your year. You should know that if you invest in a business plan with our company, we have a professional business plan writer and we have professional uh, editor, coordinator, the whole team to help you get that perfect just right. If you purchase the advanced or the advanced pro forma version, we also have an industry expert who will give you a Shark Tank style review of your business plan and tell you where it's on track and how your business is shaping up and give you some really helpful suggestions, honest, but you know, very helpful. So Ingrid says, thank you, Regina. Great content as always. You're welcome, Ingrid. And Janice says, happy birthday to Michaela's daughter. Woohoo! And thank you very much everybody for joining us today. Our next session, if you're wondering when session nine branding will be, that will be next year. So in January, we're going to pick up where we left off. We're taking December off to do agent onboarding, crush your calendar, all day replay, and then Christmas will take that week off. And then we'll be back again in January. We're going to cover branding, marketing. Um, we're going to cover leadership and legacy. So all of that will be in January just in case you're wondering. Oh, by the way, if you do get the packet, the packet for $195 that you see there with the special coupon code, those will be added later and your price will not increase. So those, when those are recorded, they will be added to your, to your bundle and there won't be any extra fee. However, for people who didn't purchase, the price will be going up. So Donna Akers, thank you, Regina. Great info. You're welcome. Awesome, everybody. Again, next year, after we finish this series, we'll be going into a series of driving profits to the max, real estate brokerages, revving up and pushing the needle. And we'll also be going into be the boss and dominate your market with blue ocean strategy. We'll be talking about innovation, differentiation, and capturing unique market share. That's going to be awesome. We're actually going to do that one um, first and then drive profits second. As always, 
We're available here for you. If you need a consultation, if you have a question, we're here for existing current brokerage owners, aspiring new brokerage owners, or if you just want to do something new and different, we'll be happy to chat with you and give you some direction and some ideas. So everybody doing good so far? Oh, perfect. You're just getting ready to ask that. Okay, great. Awesome. Feel free to reach out and contact me. I am available. Email is probably the best way right now. Since I'm not in my office, I'll be, um, you know, email or um, a phone call is probably the best way to reach me. Um, I would say probably email is the, the number one way. You know, you can always get a hold of me. So that is the conclusion of step eight, risk management. Start your brokerage out on a good foot and part of the blueprints to build your empire profitably. Not just build your real estate empire, but make sure it's profitable and ensure that it's going to last a long time because you've built it on a solid foundation. Okay, Eric says, have a great day, Regina. Yes, thank you, and you too, Eric. Karen says, got here late. Looking forward to the replay. Great information, what I got when I joined. Thanks, Regina. Happy Thanksgiving, and happy Thanksgiving to you and everybody else too. Yay, have a great day. Remember, this replay will not be available very long because we're going to start preloading our content for um, the next week which is agent onboarding. And when we start preloading that content, we are going to take the replay down um, just the way logistically it works. So uh, make sure you watch the replay right away. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. And I hope you enjoy some great family time. And uh, we're, I'm thankful for you. Have a blessed day, everybody. Bye-bye.